Welcome students. In this class, we will learn to do this particular question. This is a Cambridge University interview question and a student or a prospective student is expected to answer this question. The question wants you to find which of these two numbers is the largest. And the irony is that 90% of the time the candidates always chose the wrong answer. So whenever such questions are exposed, the instantaneous response would be to just place the greater sign like this. So meaning root 2 is greater and which is incorrect, right? Now, I'm going to show you three different ways to solve this question. Now, why am I showing you three different ways? Of course, there are there will be a large percentage of individuals who know how to solve this question. For those of you all who have some difficulty, I would like to present these three methods. Now, you have to understand that all of these three methods can be used and utilized in solving these questions of this magnitude and this nature in various forms, depending on where you come across. For example, uh, these days, even software corporations have started asking questions of this nature. So you're never going to be at a disadvantage by learning to do these questions. So it is always good to learn these skills and to use them appropriately. In other words, learning to use these methods would always be much helpful to you. So having mentioned that, let me move on. Now, let me consider root of 2 and third root of 3. Okay. Now, I can write this third root of 3 as 3 raised to the power 1 over 3. So, this is what I've got. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to raise both the terms to the power of 3. Raising both terms to the power of 3. So what happens? This is going to be, this is root 2. So I'm going to write root 2 like this and then I'm going to raise it to the power of 3. And I'm going to write 3 like this and there's 1 over 3 in this fashion and raise it to the power of 3. Now by the law of exponents, a raised to the power m and that if it is raised to the power 1 over n is equal to a raised to the power 1 over n and that is raised to the power m which is equal to a raised to the power m over n. So this is the law. So by this law I can rewrite this quantity as 3 raised to the power 3 over 3 where 3 and 3 can be cancelled giving me just 3. So this is for this part. Now, root of 2 raised to the power 3. What is it exactly? This is nothing but root of 2 multiplied with root of 2 multiplied with root of 2. Right? Now, I am clubbing these two components. Root 2, root 2. So, what do I get? Root of 2 multiplied with root of 2. I get 2. And what is root 2? Just place it as it is. Now, we know that root of 2 as found by Archimedes is 1.414. This is the basic value. Of course, it stretches on. Now, I'm going to substitute that value here. So, 2 of root of 2 is 1.414. I multiply this. This is going to be 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Decimal point 2 times 1 is 2. So, this is what I get. So, clearly you can see, no matter how many digits you are going to take, this value is not going to surpass this that I placed here. So clearly when you compare 2.828 with 3, which is greater? Clearly 3 is the largest number. So this is the solution. Of course, if you have got it, goodos. That's good. So moving on, let us see how to solve the second way. Okay, this is the method uh, 2 I'm going to show you. Now in method 2, just write let me rewrite the question. I'm going to place root of 2 here and I'm going to place third root over here. Now write root 2 as 2 raised to the power 1 over 2 and write third root of 3 as 3 raised to the power 1 over 3. So you got it like this. 
Now, my intention is to rewrite 1 over 2 and 1 over 3 in a manner that I've got something common as an exponent for both these quantities. Now, the only way that is possible first is to obtain the LCM of the number 2 with 3. Naturally, the LCM of 2 and 3 is going to be 6. Now, first step, find out. You need to find out. But how many times this 2 will divide this 6? How many times? That's going to be 3. So now what you need to do is you rewrite this to raised to the power 1 over 2 as 2 raised to the power. This quantity which you have got, place that quantity first. And then this quantity, you place it over here like this. Now clearly 3 divides 6 2 times. So you are actually rewriting 2 raised to the power 1 over 2 in this fashion. Now, next step, since you know the LCM of 2 and 3 is 6, find out by how many times this 3 will divide 6. Place that there. So, 3 divides 6 2 times. Now, rewrite this. 3 raised to the power 1 in place of this quantity, just place this quantity, 6. And then, you place by number of times this quantity 3 divides 6 that's going to be 2 place that there so you got an expression where a quantity that you know for sure which is common to both these terms is present now I'm going to use the law of indices now a raised to the power m raised to the power n is rewritten as a raised to the power m the old raised to the power m and by this law I can shift or I can shuffle 2 raised to the power 1 over 6. The exponents can be shuffled. So it's going to be 2 raised to the power 3 raised to the power 1 over 6. And then for this, it's going to be 3 raised to the power 2 raised to the power 1 over 6. So now you've got common exponent. So 2 raised to the power 3 is 8. That's raised to the power 1 over 6. 3 raised to the power 2 is 9. That raised to the power 1 over 6. Now both these quantities are positive. 8 is positive number. 9 is positive number. And by the law of indices, when you got a power m and you got some b power m, you got these two quantities in this fashion. They both share the same index. If the moment you have a greater than b or, so let, first let me write down if a is greater than b. If a is greater than b, then clearly a power m will be greater than b power m. On the contrary, if b is greater than a, then b power m would be greater than a power m. So this is just the law of indices that so you can apply and find it out. Now clearly in this case, 9 is greater than 8. So I'm going to write it down here. Since 9 is greater than 8, this would mean 9 raised to the power 1 over 6 will be greater than 8 raised to the power 1 over 6. So that's the solution. So clearly, even by this method, the third root of 3 is greater than square root of 2. So that is what this method is teaching us. Let me write that down. So this implies third root of 3 is greater than square root of 2. Now the third method is also very similar to method 2. So let me place this third method. The third method, you got root of 2 here and you got third root of 3 here. Now I'm going to write root of 2 as 2 raised to the power 1 over 2 and I'm going to write third root of 3 as 3 raised to the power 1 over 3. Now pick up a quantity which is such that this quantity 2 divides that quantity and as well as this quantity 3 divides that quantity. So the best way to find that quantity is to find the LCM of 2 and 3. So that is going to be a 6. So now what you need to do is raise this term to the power of 6, raise this term to the power of 6. That's what you need to do. Simple as that. So 2 divides here 3 times, 3 divides here 2 times, so you got 2 raised to the power 3 here, and you got 3 raised to the power 2 here. So this is going to be 8, this is going to be 9. Clearly, 9 is greater than 8. So this would mean third root of 3 is the larger number than square root of 2. Okay, I have discussed here three different methods. Now, it is imperative to understand 
that each one of these methods can be utilized in different scenarios. So have that in mind. So stay open whenever you're coming to problem solving. Thank you students. Have a nice day. Take care.